Our guest today will be no stranger to most Beatles 60 listeners. David Bedford's a prolific author who's published books on the Beatles in Liverpool and the Beatles and Liverpool and other cities, Liverpool and country music. You get the idea. Yeah. He's also worked in film and video. Uh, many of our listeners already know this. We'll put a link in the links on the episode page. The episode page. Yeah. We are jumping around in this episode, as we've already noted, and Liddy Dave um, helped us review the year 1962, where we've been for the past year because it was 2022 minus 60. Do the math. It was 1962. Mm, that's the correct math, yes. Yep. <laughs> A key moment for our boys was how to express this. Uh, what we've all seen is that it wouldn't be normal for a London A&R man to give decision-making leeway to a young group of Northerners who were completely green when it came to studio work. Ordinarily, it'd be his role to tell them to shut up and play the song chosen for them. <laughs> Beyond this question of deference to a newly signed group, George Martin brilliantly and rightly perceived that he could collaborate with them. That's a pretty fresh attitude. I don't. I don't think mm -hmm. other producers or A and R guys would be uh, so liberal. You know, certainly not Nori Paramore. Yeah, not Nori. <laughs> <laughs> it easily could have started out with Parlophone patronizing them. It didn't. Uh, he took a leap of faith. In fact, he started out patronizing and then quickly switched yeah. to respecting them somehow, or just feeling I don't know some kind of kinship, some kind of connection. Even though he was sort of fake upper class and they were like, I don't know, fake working class in a way, you know, right. um, they could see, they could, they could read each other somehow right away. And he let the Beatles be Beatles. Likewise, before or after the first meeting, at some point, the Beatles saw George Martin as a fellow traveler. Uh, Dave explains. So one of, one of the skiffle songs that every group in Liverpool did was Maggie May, which of course the, the Beatles do a, a little version of. Later on, the yeah. Viper. Yeah, the Viper Skiffle Group recorded that, produced by George Martin. Right. So in 57, they're listening to and copying a George Martin record that the Vipers do Maggie May. The other thing that they had was when they're told it's George Martin at Parlophone. I know Paul said this in an interview. He had a copy of uh, Songs for Swinging Sellers. Yeah. The Peter Sellers. LP. Mm. They were all massive fans of the Goons. Mm. And they knew that George Martin produced the Goons. What wins George Martin over is once they start joking with him. And again, he tells the famous story. He's given them a rundown. This is how things work. He's talking for about 20 minutes and says, Right, it's any comments you want to make, anything you're not happy with? Silence. And then George says, Well, I don't like your tie. Suddenly, the silence is broken, and goonish humor starts. Mm. And then they have this banter going backwards and forwards. Mm. George, you know, Norman Smith remembers this, you know, with, with John Paul and George. And they're clowning around, and George warms to their personalities. And he said he could see there was something in them. Yeah. But musically, they needed a lot of work. Can I just throw in here that... Over the past year, we've dealt with the controversy over Pete versus Ringo. Um, and we've really come to have warm and fuzzy feelings towards Pete since we've kind of spent the last two years with him, just as the Beatles did. Um, David Bedford put a different spin on the controversy that we feel really kind of resolves the issue, allows us to be both pro Ringo and pro Pete. Mm. Um, and even takes us into the changes from mid-1962 going into 1963 that we'll be talking about that required the Beatles to adapt. Uh, so take a listen to this. Yeah, this is really good. The only evidence there is is that when George Martin says to Brian Epstein, don't mind what you do with them as a group, he said, but if we make a record, that this was the big thing. They were not under contract. This was their very last chance. If mm. I give you a contract, I'm going to use a session drummer. Mm. Now, Brian doesn't understand studio protocols. That was a common way of doing things back then. Completely commonplace, yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. You know, people like Jimmy Page, session guitarist, whatever happened to him, who knows? <laughs> so, so they had all these session musicians, but Brian and the Beatles didn't know that. So as Paul has said, you know, Pete was a great drummer playing live. But if the record producer is saying, if we get a contract, he's not good enough for the record, then we've got to change him. And you can't blame them. Mm. For these three lads, this was their very last chance. If they don't get the contract, that's the end of the Beatles. So if it means they have to ditch their drummer because the producer has said he's not good enough for playing on the record, then they do that. And, you know, Paul has said it, you know, as John has said, we were cowardly the way we did it. Yeah. But you had to be ruthless. The young men, uh, this is what they've been working on for years and years. This was their final chance. And they did nothing until George Martin says, okay, you've got your contract. <laughs> then they decided to replace him. So that they thought about it, but they weren't going to do anything until they got the contract through. Once they got the contract, that's when they start approaching other drummers. Their sound was largely based on Pete's drumming. Mm. Now, mm. one of those things that, um, as I say in the Finding the Fourth Beatle, when Pete leaves, that is the end of the Beatles. Mm. And a brand new pop group called the Fab Four are born. Mm. The, 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 um, the covers rock and roll band who have been tearing up Liverpool and Hamburg, mm. unlike anything anybody had ever seen before. Mm. have now got to dress up nicely in their suits and play pop music right. and, mm. origin and original songs in a recording studio. That's completely different to playing live. And that, that's, that's pretty interesting. That's an interesting take, yeah. And, and mm. that's why with these comparisons of Pete and Ringo, I have to say to people, you, you can't compare one thing with the other. You say, oh, Pete mm. wouldn't keep time. You've got to allow both. And my argument yeah. is always appreciate and thank Pete for what he did in those two years because without yeah. him they would not have got to the stage of getting Brian Epstein and getting a record contract. You're they absolutely won, right. They won that without, with him. Without him, without Mona, without the Casbah. Absolutely mm -hmm. right. You've got, and that's my job has always been is telling those stories of the people who yeah. get, get us to 1962. Right. And there's a lot, as, as I found in my, my second book, The Fab 104, yeah. 104 people who play a part in the story, all deserve their credit. Yeah. But Pete deserves huge credit. Yes. For being yeah. with the Beatles. And, you know, John says that was when they were at their best, playing their straight rock. That was with Pete. You know, that's when they were a fantastic rock and roll band, but they became this different group, a pop group, yeah. playing original mm -hmm. music. And mm -hmm. Ringo, because of his background, playing with Rory Storm, the Hurricanes, playing at the holiday camps, where you'd have to play a great variety of musical styles to entertain. He had all these different musical rhythms that he could pick out of his head mm. and say, oh, I'll do the variation on this one this time. And he'd mm. always find the right rhythm at the right time for the right song. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a skill you cannot teach. That's a natural ability yeah. that he has. Right. So Ringo is adapted for the next stage. You know? Correct. He's perfect for it. That sets us up perfectly for what we're going to be getting to about Ringo's value to the perfect storm, as David would put it, that was brewing for the Beatles. The pivot from leather rock to mop top pop. <laughs> hey, uh, before we move on, we should tell everyone how they can hear and subscribe to our monthly Beatles 60 live show, generally the first weekend of each month. Uh, but let's let Denise tell you all about that. Hey, Denise! <laughs> Andy and Larry appreciate those who listen all through the regular podcast episodes. So we have a new, very cool bonus for you, an exclusive monthly event called Beatles 60 Live. The live show is audio, not video. First weekend of every month, Membership is free, and audio access is free. It's all free and easy. This audio doesn't appear in the normal podcast feed, but you can access it from anywhere in the world by signing up for Beatles 60 Live. Once you sign up, you'll see how easy access is. Okay, here's how you find the members page. 
there's just one simple little trick. See this episode notes. Find the Beatles60.group link. Open that in any browser. To get to the secret live page for members, just add live at the end. So it's Beatles60.group slash live. Again, Beatles60.group slash live. The first time you get there, you'll have to sign up. It takes just a couple of seconds. Just enter any name and valid email and you're there. Bob's your uncle. It's that straightforward. Got it? That's Beatles 60.group slash live. We'll email you in advance of each live so you'll know the exact time to listen, specified in most world time zones. And you'll have a convenient invitation link sent to you privately. You'll find stuff easily using the members only navigation. Dead simple once you're in. Full live event information is all there. If you have any trouble, just contact Andy. He can give you the link privately or resend the confirmation email or whatever. Members who missed the live event can listen later. We'll archive each one on the Beatles 60 Live page. You can just choose a past date, hit the play button, and listen anytime. Hope you can join. I just want to add that your email address is safe with me. I'm the only one who will email you no more than once a month. Uh, to announce each event, and it's easy to unsubscribe. You have my word. Andy is trustworthy. Come and join our little insider community. Yes. There's an ever-expanding archive of exclusive talks with authors and journalists in our live part of our website but it's members only but it's free and so be sure to get your free access to beetle60.group slash live this is beetles 60 this was only part of a longer audio podcast Uh, You can find one or two other parts of this episode uh, on our YouTube channel. We post audio to YouTube only in short segments to make them easy to share. If your purpose is to share short segments of our audio podcast, then the YouTube clips can be convenient. But our YouTube channel is just for segments. Uh, It's audio, so there's nothing to look at. We're not really interested in producing video content. So for Beatles 60, to tell you the truth, the YouTube channel is really where the action isn't. If you want a continuous listening experience for yourself while washing up or while hiking or while commuting, similar to listening to audiobooks, then we recommend getting our full podcast episodes automatically sent to your phone or your tablet or your PC um, every month. Use a podcast app. It's easy to find us and subscribe. There's a link in the show notes, or you can always go to beetle60.group. You see, you navigate down to uh, one of the episode pictures on the front page, And then you tap that, and then there's a description of the episode, and then listen now, and then you tap that, and you can choose any uh, podcast app that works for you. Or you could listen right there if you want to. Mm. This is Beatles 60. Uh, The interval between this podcast and our next podcast will, 60 years ago, have been the exact same interval. Get the idea? The Beatles will have experienced the exact same number of days 
same season. All of you who've been following this real-time chronicle with us already get the pace. You already understand, right? Same speed. Technically, we'd call this a longitudinal phenomenological hey, hey. historiographic study. Barry, eh? what's with all the academic jargon? Well, this is a serious series. The Earth turns at one speed and in one way, am I right? At least in lived experience, last I looked. Now remember, the future is unwritten. Ultimately, we're talking about human experience. We can't walk in the Beatles' boots if we're jumping around all different billions and billions of years. As nothing could make any sense. So come on. We gotta repeat that slogan. This is a chronicle. 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 Beatles 60. We ain't jumping around.